was not the tragedy of Tristan and his old fair-haired Cornish piper, Harper, whose hands knew steel and string, and Ireland's greatest treasure, born like Helen, across the water, while the waves approaching bowed before her beauty. All who've heard the telling know the blind and bitter fates held the cup of love's sweet poison to unconsenting lips, and his plank fell home to timber, and the king beheld his lady. Carols rang within the church, and seagulls screamed. All the harbors labor on their agonies of passion, unfulfilled and ever straining like lodestones to the north. But few will ever mention how the cold breath of the Northland let them lie at last as one without deceit. When Tristan could no longer bear the shame of guilty conscience, he took ship to far Britannia, half-hearted and bereft. He cast aside his music, cut the strings which brought him joy, and sought solace in the fury of the field. Praise grew up around him like the corn around a boulder, as the Cornish men did battle with demons in and out. With singing sword and thunder, Tristan vainly sought distraction, yet she whispered in the silence of the slain. In the way of warriors, rewarding noble heroes, <laughs> fairest Blanchman of the Britons was given to his wife, but Blanchman knew no pleasure from her cold and grieving husband, for the marbled face of memory was his bride. In that time, the country was beset by Eden servants, and the basest of all creatures could bring the highest lows. Two poisons coursed within him, and none could be his savior, but the healing arts of Ireland and his own. Wings of hope departed, struggling north against the tempest, with tender words entreating for mercy and for grace. If his love no longer moved her, hoist the black into the rigging. But if white was her answer, he would wait. Daylight creeping downward, Tristan's demons massed against him, and the words of his delusions brought hidden love to light, while the woman he had married, but to whom he'd given nothing, set her long and jealous vigil by his side. Morning framed the answer, walking lightly over the water, like Christ's own victory banner it blew, flew toward the shore. It was white as angels' raiments, but when silently he begged her, Ferris Blanchman softly told him, Tis a fight. Who can say which venom took the soul from Tristan's body, and the bells began their tolling as his soul ran up the strand. The wind grew soft and silent as she wept upon her lover, and in gentleness it took her grief away. Side by side they laid them, with the soil their separation, even yet they were divided by the morals of the world. But their spirits spiraled upward, Iron's briar and Cornwall's rose, and together at the last they lay entwined.